Hello, welcome to the Mediocre Takes podcast, the podcast where we share our mediocre takes on the shows and movies we watch. I'm Marco, and here's my co-host, Mel. Mel, what is your take for the day? My take for the day is Princess Kikyo in the manga and the comics of Inuyasha is freaking cool. I don't know who that character is, but I guess I agree with you. There's some discourse in the community that I actively hmm. ignore. Today, we are doing a special YouTube exclusive video. Um, today, we're doing our first Mediocre Monthly. This is going to be a monthly book comic club. Today, we're talking about Bingo Love. We're also going to be doing another graphic novel this month called Nimona. We thought we might as well do like two of these episodes instead of one, just because we're starting out with this type of content now. Hazel tells her story of life, love, and loss to the lover of her life who has lost her memory. Yeah, that's Bingo Love. It's a really cute, sweet, romantic graphic novel. I will say I wasn't the biggest fan of this. However, I do think I can see why people like this. And I also do like it for the fact that it's just like a straight up like really cute and fun time. Okay, was I the only one who found it weird? The way Hazel's daughter reacted after seeing Hazel and Mari kiss? Now maybe it's because I have a habit of not being able to react to drastic things. Or I guess I don't have that like big of reactions to things, like serious situations. Like fun fact about me, um, when I first was getting diagnosed with my heart condition, uh, my doctor told me, yeah, you have said heart condition and I'm sending you to the hospital because it looks really bad. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I just kind of didn't really react. I was just like, yeah, you know, that's life. It's the heart condition. So maybe that's just me being like me. But the way she reacted made me feel really confused and weirded out. Like, I feel like if I, I saw my mom like kiss another woman i wouldn't start crying i would just be kind of confused you know like this girl saw the two of them kiss and cried like she knew her parents were going to get divorced after that and i don't know something about that weirded me out i feel like she should have acted at least less sad and more confused in my head because that just makes more sense to me also this reaction kind of felt homophobic in general just in my opinion i think it's kind of funny the one child named after Hazel's queer lover is the one that reacts the worst to it. <laughs> but I also think her her reaction in general, this is a fairly short comic. Because of that, some scenes feel very rushed. I think this is one of them where it was like, the writers were like, this is the reaction we want her to have. Obviously, it has to escalate very quickly in order for us to like have that scene. Because it's a pretty short comic, you know, they had to have like that sort of explosive scene or whatever. So I get it like that. And then I'm also someone who's like, <laughs> when something horrible happens to me, I immediately just like have a meltdown. <laughs> so I sort of understand where she's coming from. She thought that her parents were like in this loving relationship for what, like over like 40 years or something. So to her, this is like practically her, her life, yeah. her whole life. She grew up with that. Yeah. So like, she's like, uh, okay, so who's this woman and why is she kissing you uh, during bingo night? I don't know. Something about it just, just felt weird. Um, and I think part of that had to do with the fact that because this is such a short graphic novel, there were scenes that felt a bit rushed. And I definitely think that this is one of those scenes that feel a bit rushed. So my main problem with this graphic novel is the casual cheating in it. The casual cheating from everyone. <laughs> All the adults yes, are cheating. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me make this clear. It's all cheating from both sides because I'm mostly going to talk about the main characters cheating, but the husband cheats as well. And I want to make that clear that I'm not a fan of that either. Like, girl, I know we love lesbians, but Hazel was so casual about kissing Marie and only realizes she's cheating on her husband like a few kisses in. Maria's about to kiss Hazel and Hazel's like, oh wait, I have a husband. And I'm like, girl, you remember now of all times? Like, what what happened the last time? I thought you were just ignoring him at this point, to be honest. The husband is even worse and I don't like him. He's honestly so annoying and nasty. But Mel and I have both said this before, but cheaters are weird. What makes things even worse, especially when it comes to the husband, is that he judges Hazel for falling in love with Marie and like he like as if he hasn't already cheated on her with in a the man first place. he cheated on her yeah with a man like Anyways. Er early early on to their relationship too <laughs> i don't know what's going on with this I mean, graphic novel I mean, and cheating at least at least the cheaters got together you know like he's like what about our family what about what we've created together and i this man is a hypocrite 
That's all I have to say. Well, I think all he really wanted was a family. But at the same time, like, he, he's still married to someone. I don't know. It's just so weird. What? I know. I know. I think I do have strong opinions about cheating. And I think this is one of the, like, very few select very specific situations where I'm like, they're all cheating, they're all queer, like, <laughs> they obviously don't yeah, want to be together. Yeah. I think she mentioned that the only times they ever ew, had S-E-X was when, <laughs> was when he wanted a kid. So it was like, it felt like they were like casual friends who were like, let's have kids together. <laughs> also, you kind of just said it the way that the graphic novel said it. The graphic novel says, we only ever got intimate when when he wanted kids or something like that. I know, you know? but like, it's, it's to, like to, gross. You damn it like S-E-X, like a child, you know? The art in this graphic novel is pretty and I will give it that. I especially like the art during the scenes where they were teenagers. There was this one specific panel where um, I think Marie is giving Hazel a kiss on the cheek. It's during the like very beginning of the graphic novel, and it's really pretty. But yeah, those scenes where they were teenagers, the art really just stood out a lot to me more. Okay, so my question is, why do Hazel and Marie forget the time period they're living in? Like, I get being young and in love, but kissing in public when you know that stuff is taboo and that you can literally be harmed for it felt kind of not out of character. It just felt like these characters weren't thinking at all, which I do get because they're teenagers. But at the same time, I think these characters are mature enough to understand like what they're risking if they do that stuff in public at that time period. Like what was going on in these characters' heads? I don't know, something about it didn't make sense. Also, when Marie just randomly kisses Hazel during the bingo night once they're adults, it honestly felt like they were just doing that for plot's sake or to drive up the drama. Like once again, we were talking about this earlier, but when Hazel gets kissed by Marie during bingo night, Hazel's daughter like starts crying and re reacting like really poorly. And it felt like the only reason they had Marie kiss Hazel in the first place was to get to the point where Hazel's daughter would start crying and like the drama would incur because I feel like if you see someone that you haven't seen in that long would you really like start off by just kissing them randomly like you would at least say hi like what happened to hi hello how are you I think it mostly has to do with like how these characters haven't seen each other since they were teenagers and the fact that they didn't like I don't know act like adults I guess is what I'm trying to say when they were as old as they are it just felt weird I think the way they try to get away with it is they show how in love Hazel is with Marie when they're younger. She was literally like she she wants to marry Marie after like the after she kissed her cheek. And then they also had that first kiss on the uh like their first actual kiss on um the steps of the church and that like that that whole scene with those was drawn in a very like magical moment or whatever. So I think the way they tried to the way they tried to explain it was like Hazel was like this is my soulmate. What I find interesting about that is we didn't necessarily need a mouth kiss in that moment because pretty sure Marie kisses her on the head and mm -hmm. I feel like even that in and of itself is very intimate especially like witnessing someone do that with someone you don't even know you'd be like um that's strange that's a little intimate. I feel like that could have even set off Hazel's daughter a little bit to be like who is this girl? Why are you so close with her? Because of the limitations of the length of this comic. They sort of had to expedite some stuff. Why would you kiss someone you haven't seen in that long in public as a queer person? They're so um, I know I love the lesbians, but some of you are making weird choices, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Me trying to not sound lesbophobic. I actually really liked how Hazel hadn't fully come to terms with her bisexuality. Usually in media, I'm tired of, oh, I'm sad because I'm queer and I'm not accepted as a person type of narrative, but here it made sense, especially with the time period she grew up in. Though I do think the scene with her therapist could have been written better. Again, I just felt like there were some scenes that were rushed. I just wish this graphic novel was honestly longer. There were scenes that definitely needed to be longer, like the, the scene where she was talking to her therapist, the scene where she was talking to her daughter, also the scene where she was talking to her husband and like how she was trying to break down the, the idea that like her husband wanted the idea of a family. Stuff like that I feel like needed to be lengthened. Quote, she was a honey glazed goddess, said Hazel. What do you think about people describing people like food? So I find it weird when non-people of color do it, but I still find it weird when people of color do it either way, you know? I Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and I think the reason I think it's weird is because non-people of color do it to people of color often in a in a fetishistic way. Feti yeah. Fet fetishist? That's a word, right? fetishized way in a fetishized way i read that and i was like um what are we 
you doing here? <laughs> um, yeah, when they say like caramel chocolate, like just stop. Oh yeah. Just stop. <laughs> what? Let's let's be a chocolate vanilla swirl by beautiful oh. dark chocolate princess. <laughs> ew, ew, kill me. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Ooh, we got a little too white there. Sorry, the white jumped out at me. When Hazel says she realizes she wanted to marry Mary, does that actually happen? Like, I know they're teens and I know they had to, like, really show how in love Hazel was. But do people, specifically teenagers, because I know, you know, hormones or whatever, is that a, a normal thing that people experience? <laughs> Where, like, they get kissed on the cheek and they're like, I have to marry this person. See, I think that's just the hormones talking. Okay. But I can definitely see that still happening if the hormones are talking, you know? Okay. I just think marriage was a huge leap because I can be like, I, yes. I, I can understand like, oh, I, I really want to date this person. But to be like, so we're going to get married? <laughs> yes, I feel like you have to be a special type of teenager to, to go that route specifically. Okay, so when... They first kissed in front of the church after Marie talked about how her mom was threatening to kick her out over her grandma's drama. I totally expected them to get caught by another person in that specific moment. And I was kind of surprised that it happened later. I feel like it's, I mean, it's basically, I don't know. I feel like I kind of wanted it to be one scene, but I do think it is pretty slow that they kissed in front of a church. So there are two arranged marriages in this comic. And it makes me wonder, Marco, in a hypothetical world, let's say back in the day, what would you do if your parents <laughs> forced you to marry a woman? And things. <gasps> oh my to be gosh. Honest. Same. I said that too. <laughs> <laughs> I literally said, like, if I had to marry a man, I genuinely would have to kill myself. Or yeah. not live in Minecraft. Okay, here's the thing. I feel like it had to be to, like, what extent? Like, if I'm expected to have kids, then that definitely end things, you know? Yeah. But then again, at that time, you're kind of expect at that time period, you're I feel like having kids is like your only option. So I feel like either way, I would have to end things. So. Yes, I'm glad we're on the same wavelength. Let's Imagine see. if we got married to each other and that, then we both ended things. <laughs> My only stipulation with this was that I married a gay man, but even <laughs> then, he would have to be gay in a way that he wouldn't want to touch me. Because then we can just yeah. lie and be like, oh, sorry, I'm infertile. Genuinely, I probably am. And even Honestly, if I- Honestly, me too. <gasps> Say, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> in another lifetime, Marco. Um, yeah. And then we could have cheated on each other with uh, <laughs> people of the same gender. <laughs> it would have been so magical. Um, yeah. Love that for us. Okay. Someone write the alternate universe fan fiction of us right now. Or don't. <laughs> 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 write a cute little comic- and post it on Tumblr, and that's it. I am actually so pissed that that ending made me cry. First of all, dementia. That is what Mari has. And dementia, and like, just dementia, the disease, um, is so devastating. But the fact that they used that to tie the ending with the beginning together was so good. She was literally telling the story of how she got with the love of her life to the love of her life who's forgotten her like that's so good because in the beginning where like um you know there's this mysterious lady and she looks nothing like um what we see marie to look like and she's like oh my parents kicked me out because they found out i'm gay like what do i do can i stay with you and then hazel's like let me tell you a story that twist literally made me cry yeah it did make me angry you didn't speak much about the ending marco i thought it was a very clever oh, ending. maybe i forgot to write it down i i think i liked it it also kind of made me angry i don't know why i don't know something about it just felt wrong in my head and messed up and it made me angry but i think in overall it's a good ending you know it was a clever and bittersweet ending um i think the only reason like one of the reasons why i was angry was because I wanted a happy ending for the lesbians. In a way, I guess we got that because they are hearty, hearty, harrying in heaven. It was also very devastating. I think this is a fine graphic novel. I just feel like there's some pacing issues, some writing issues, but I can still see why people like this. And honestly, I enjoyed it for what it was as well. I think it's a really sweet, cute, short graphic novel. But overall, I think it's, it's okay, I guess. I would give it like a three stars, I guess, out of five. It's solid. It's there. I don't think it's like anything amazing. And I think we should make it very clear 
that Marco was the one to recommend this comic because he loves lesbians. Wait, why did I choose this graphic novel? Maybe I just do love lesbians. Maybe that's how I discovered it. I'm just in tune with the lesbians and the lesbians are like, here you go, gay. Read this it's, because we know you'll enjoy it. It's so funny because we were like, okay, let's make a list of all the comics. And I was thinking, oh my, what comic? Like, what? Because like it, it had to be sort of like a, like a, like a short one issue or only a few issues. Um, and it had to be something that like we both want to read or whatever and i was like i i don't know like what what i could think of or whatever i literally had bingo love like i had the comic with me already and i was still thinking like oh what could it be what could and then you were like yeah so we can do bingo love we can do this and i was like yes bingo love obviously <laughs> like yeah sometimes i'm just more in tune with lesbians than you are and that's, and that's just true. a special relationship i have with them that's true with them <laughs> this was such a bittersweet comic and not at all what I expected it to be off the title. Um, this is definitely a, a one and done comic for me. Um, I just think the ending is something I can only experience once. Really, the only issue I had with this was that it made me ugly cry. I would give it an 8.5 out of 10. Oh. Can I just mention, I love the fact that I'm using 5 out of 5 stars and you're using 10 out of 10 stars. With the with the out of 10 system, I feel like you can get much more specific. Yeah, that's true. I'm just so used to Goodreads and Boo. it's 5 out of 5 star system. Oh my god, I forgot we're not doing our mediocre minute. Okay. Anyways, you guys, that's our thoughts on Bingo Love. If you want to send us a voice message on Spotify for podcasters, there'll be a link in the description to do so below. And we also have Instagram and Twitter at MidTakesPod. And it's everything. So, goodbye.